Hello and welcome to this overnight taste challenge. I guess I can't call it Dawn Busters because it's still nighttime. You know, but up until uh, December 21st, it's going to get darker and darker. Then, after the um, winter solstice, <laughs> it'll start to slowly brighten up. You know what I mean? Like each day will get longer until June. But this morning, we have this a.m. at night, <laughs> we have a taste challenge. Okay, now I've been very dismayed about these taste challenges because I've been getting them wrong. But like I said in the last one, I've set my own trap. I can't get out of it. If I say I'm going to taste everything and then I start getting it wrong and I disappear from the challenges, uh, that's not competing, is it? That's dropping out and uh, really kind of violating my, the, my own principle of you go through the challenges. Okay, it's part of the challenge, right? 10 high. Kentucky. Bourbon whiskey, a blend, introduced in 1935. Around 10 years ago, give or take a few years, whatever, it doesn't matter. There's not a lot of history about this product. This was changed from a blend, a straight bourbon whiskey to a blended. It's 80 proof. The bottle's sweating because I have the wind, some of the windows open and a warm front has developed. <laughs> so we had this cold, damp day yesterday, cold. I mean, it was uncomfortable. Ugh. Then that backed up. Now we got all this warm Gulf of Mexico air coming in. So when I woke up this morning, all the windows were fogged up. So it's colder. It's colder in the house, but it's warm outside. So now the bottles are sweating. <laughs> but I can't take that controlled environment of where you always have all the windows sealed and air conditioning, conditioning and there's no fresh air. I cannot deal with that. I have to have windows open usually and let fresh air in. And I don't want to feel boxed in. I can't do it. I can't take it. Okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to open this window. <clears throat> All right. Versus Jim Beam. I can hear that when Jim Beam Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey introduced in 1938. Yeah, I know the bottle says something else. It's funny how if you do research, you find out the real story. Um, okay. Yes. There is some proof <laughs> that the Beam, the Bim, German, Bim, immigrant family, has been distilling bourbon since about 1795, around that time. After Kentucky became a state, you know, that Kentucky became a state, this is about 1792. Okay, um, but the actual brand, Jim Beam, didn't come about till 1938, and that's because James Beam brought the company back out of uh, the evils of prohibition, I guess you see kind of like that, you'd say kind of like that Jefferson Starship song from 1982, I came back from the jaws of the dragon. So they were like down and out, but he brought them back. They show all the guys on the bottle, Jacob, David, David M, Colonel James Beam, Jeremiah Beam, Booker No, and Fred No. But Jim Beam, who died 70 years ago this year, he's the guy that made the company big. So they named they actually named the bourbon after him in his honor. Now it's the No family, N-O-E. Because, you know, through inheritance on the mother's side, the maternal side, they inherited that name, No, N-O-E. Just like Louisiana had a governor, No, once. N-O-E. And they named her, he, he had his own radio station, W-N-O-E, no. 
and Governor No was there in the state capitol when Huey Long was shot. And Governor No ran and got his pistol out the desk and ran back, but it was too late. Okay, um, so this is JB. Am I going to be able to tell them apart? Hey, look, I, I got to tell you now, my confidence level is low. Now, look at that sweating bottle. Look at that. It's just so much condensation. It's like the, see, the problem is the whiskey inside the bottle is cold, but the warmth is here on the outside, so it's sweating. <laughs> I chilled it without chilling it. <laughs> um, but honestly, I'd rather have this warm air. It might get to 75 today, no joke. Um, I think the answer is that it's not that I'm bad at telling these apart. It's that the 10 high is so much better than you would expect that it can go toe to toe with a lot of stuff. So that's what throws you off. Now, yeah, 10 high has that very strange, <laughs> hazy sediment filled appearance. They're both go gold. So I have to be careful not to look because that haze, and I don't know what, it's like the, I'm sure it's chill filtered, isn't that like the cheaper economical way to do it? That probably didn't work right. There may have been a problem with the machine or something. And then uh, somebody was saying, well, go buy another bottle. That was John and Neely. You ought to go buy another bottle and test it with the the filtered against, you know, a, the clear bottle that I saw at Matherns against this hazy one that I had bought at Matherns. But, uh, you know, I got so much back stock. I'm not going to do that. I don't think it's going to be any different because um, really it just tastes normal. It doesn't taste tainted. My friend David Garlapede, you know, with the big beard, he wanted me to taste that New England corn whiskey. He said, I think it's rotten. I think it's rancid or something. I said, what? How could it be rancid? So I was at his house yesterday and I tasted it. I smelled it. And I said, it doesn't smell rancid. It smells like beeswax. It's a little unusual. I said, it's not rancid. He says the cherry, huh? I said, yeah, because they, they age it in cherry wood and charred white oak. And it's a corn whiskey. It's kind of a strange item. I said, I think that's what's throwing you off and making you think it's bad. Whereas, really, it's just unusual, odd. So I just took an ounce and a half taste, something like that. Then we tried that maple flavored whiskey from Canada. Um, they're selling it down here for $4.99 a bottle, which is strange. Tasted just like pancake syrup. <laughs> Maple, he thought it tasted like Miss Butterworth. So I'm gonna put that review up soon. Cabin still, oddest thing. It's not listed as a liqueur. It's listed as a whiskey, it's strange. Okay, Jason Voorhees says, old granddad 114. Oh, no, no. You get up above, yeah, you get above 100, it starts to freak me out. <laughs> Sorry to hear about your falling out with Lee Russell. Well, I was sorry about that too because I'm always willing to make up with anybody. I don't. I don't know what you heard about that, but I guess it's common knowledge. But I, yeah, we used to do hangouts together. I, I like everybody in the beer world pretty much. Now, there's some people I don't watch because I can't stand their videos. Like, there's a guy in Canada. I used to watch his review, but they, every video was like 35, 40 minutes. But only two or three minutes of the video seemed like it was about the beer. It was all this long, drawn out, like inside jokes with people he knows and stuff. And I was like, I can't watch this. There's no point to this. I want to watch a beer review. I don't want to hear somebody make a smirk like, mah, 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 and it's all funny. And, but I mean, he might be a nice guy, no personal animosity. I don't even know the guy, but he's been on the air a long time, on the air, you know, on the internet. <laughs> but yeah, so in that sense, I will not watch some videos just because this, maybe the format. But as far as personal conflict, I really can't say I have any. And this is the truth. I can't, honest, I honestly cannot say I have any 
harbor any ill will toward any beer reviewer. Always trying to bring peace. What, what do I say? Positive energy projection in the beer world. Jason says, sounds like whiskey reviewer Ralphie. Laugh out loud. I've watched some of his videos. They seem fine to me. But this other guy mainly does beer. I saw he had posted one the other day, and I was like, oh, I can't watch it. I'm not a subscriber to his channel. I, but, like, if I look up a beer, sometimes his name will come up. I was like, I'm not watching a 40-minute thing where he makes inside jokes. And, it, and a lot of his stuff is, like, weird homosexual like connotations. I'm like, why do I, why would I want to see this? <laughs> you know, I'm, I have no, I don't care what he does. I don't really care what other people do with their channels. I just said, I don't, it's not, I don't want to see it. <laughs> you know, I don't want to see it. Who are your favorite beer tubers? Well, maybe we ought to do that in another chat hangout uh, because I want to get to this bourbon. I got a, I have a hard time limit coming up. At top of the hour, I have a hard, I have to stop. News coming on, I gotta kill it. Uh, but uh, William Kepley was talking about doing an end of the year retrospective on Hangouts and whatnot, and then we could talk about that. I have a lot of them, a lot of favorites, actually. And I watch a lot, <laughs> I watch a lot, and I always comment. And I've told other people, I said, I challenge you Find any video or anywhere ever going back to seven years, eight years, I'm sorry, eight years, 2009. Find any video, no, I'm sorry, seven years, where I said anything ugly or negative to anyone. I challenge you to do that. <clears throat> now, you might find me speaking my mind or whatever, it's not being ugly. I mean, people have a right to say what they want, but people are touchy. You got to watch it, Jason. They're touchy, like real funny, funny, funny. We talked about that in the psychology videos, those four, uh, uh, Hans Isink's four model uh, study of personality, right? Personality traits. And I do find a lot of the beer reviewers fall into that unstable side of it because he talked about people are either stable or unstable Hans Isink and then he had the top of the compass introverted extroverted so they could there's four quadrants right introverted unstable keep to themselves and not they're not stable there then you have extroverted they're out and about loud life at a party but they're still unstable then you got stable extroverted out and about life of the party but they're Stable, level-headed, you know. Then you got the introverted, keep to themselves, kind of quiet, but they're stable, you know. Keep a job, kind of keep things even keel, not touchy, not not, you know, you know that kind. What? All right. Wood alcohol. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Wood whiskey. Not a whole lot of alcohol burn with these. Wood. Wood. Um, some char, a little smoke, it smells nice. <sighs> Same thing. <laughs> this is going to be a hell of a challenge, let me tell you. <laughs> Holy smokes. Going on a room alone, I would shop price only. I'm not going to pay $13.99 for Jim Beam, and I can get $10.99 at Winn Dixie. I don't think that's going to happen. But we're not here to smell whiskey, right? This is a not a smell challenge. This is a taste challenge. It's not an appearance challenge. Uh. Wow, that's some heavy char. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's got the dried flowers and the candied fruit cake fruit and the corn, right? These are bourbon whiskeys. It's going to be largely corn. 
Even the blended is going to be largely corn because you're taking 51% straight bourbon, which has to be mostly corn, and then you're mixing it with grain neutral spirits, which is mostly corn. It's just flavorless and odorless, bulk, filler, corn, whiskey, slash grain neutral spirits. So that's not going to present any flavor or aroma, or if it does, there's something wrong with the stuff. But you're still going to get a corn type. I, uh, I'm getting a major lag on this stream. Let me listen. Let me listen. Slash green neutral spirits. So that's not going to present any flavor or aroma. Or if it does, there's something wrong with the stuff. No, I'm I'm watching the playback. There's no lag on my end. It's I will get that sometimes where somebody will say he's getting a lag. The next guy will say, I don't see anything wrong with it. And all I can do is check, check the audio. And if it's the playback is coming across smooth, then it's got to be on your end. I can't answer for that. Sorry. And when I use Microsoft Edge slash Explorer, I usually never have any lag or uh, audio issues. It's not this computer. This computer is fast. It's, a, it, this, it's the best desktop I've ever owned, I think. It's a Dell. Now, oh, now, okay, wait, all right. Here. You see, <laughs> with Jim Beam, I noticed that there's like a green wood. It's like wood that's not totally dried. It's almost like green. I know that can't be correct, but it seems to have that. And um, then you have that little mossiness. Like um, we have a lot of moss around here. That's why everybody's nose run all the time because moss is from mold, right? But um, it's almost like a you can smell Spanish moss in a way if you get close to it. And um, I think that's what this must be. Now, which one's better? Huh? He says, oh, yeah, I saw one BDU where you, Dr. Dave, and Lee were talking about drama in the community. <laughs> yeah, that's ironic, ain't it? Because then it was Dr. Dave and me and Lee and everything was so happy, hunky dory and, and then it turned bad because then Dave made that. That was an infamous video where he went after me. It was kind of interesting. I mean, it didn't really bother me. And then some people were contacting me secretly saying, I can't believe he's coming after you like this. And I was like, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah. And then it was like this big explosion. And then Lee was very angry at Dr. Dave. And then, then he made the video about uh, Dave the bully and Recently got rid of three friends not connected to YouTube or tasting reviewing in any way, he says, and was banned from a forum. Feels liberating, really. Yeah, I don't go for that banning from forums, that weird parano you know, that that's that's a problem I have with the whole thing because you get the paranoia and then it makes you paranoid because you don't know what kind of fast ones people are gonna pull. Which is why I always say you talk it out, you talk it out. Do things up front. Say what you feel up front. Don't be a weasel about it. <laughs> Don't use back channels. And if somebody talks to you privately, keep it private. But some people got a big mouth, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why I mainly just keep everything public because then nobody could say you're at me because I'm saying this public. Like I told Dr. Dave years ago, I said, well, that was when we were officially enemies. And although he was secretly talking, you know, we were secretly talking the whole time off and on. So he, but I, I had discovered he was sharing private information. So I said, I want you to know that every communication we've ever had can now be considered public. And I didn't care if he shared anything I said because I didn't feel regretful for anything I had said. You understand? I, 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 I didn't mind if it was shared. In fact, sometimes I will say things in private that I'm seeing if it's going to be shared. You know what I mean? I'll plant things. And then if it comes back later, I'll know you shared it. So I did that in some different 
conversations and in videos actually i planted things to show people that i knew what they were saying in private you know what i mean i like used their quotes in a video and they wanted to know who was the rat you know but uh that's how you kind of go against all that backdoor weird sneaky insanity you just make sure that anything you say you don't mind if it's shared <laughs> And that's generally my policy. <laughs> Diabolical. Hey, but you know what? We made up. And I knew that was going to happen. I told Maria Devon, I said, uh, I said, it's going to change, Maria. Dave is going to change. I can see it. Winds of I just was listening to that song this morning. I said, winds of change are coming around. <laughs> Josh says, thank you for another year of kick-ass videos. Oh, you're welcome. I always like that earthiness of Jim Beam. You think it's their yeast strains? Oh, and Josh says, cheers and have a, and the family have a great Christmas. Hey, you too. I think it could be the yeast strain. I said that about some other whiskeys. I think the yeast strain makes a big difference. Okay, well, let's call it because I only got two minutes till I got to make the hard exit. Uh, I think this is 10 High and I think this is Jim Beam, but which one's better? Hmm, okay. Better to call which one's better for our reveal, right? For I know. Um, I think the one to the right, maybe your left, is better. It has a little more bolder flavor, but not harsh. Bold, more prominent, smoky, mossy greenwood flavor that's enjoyable. The other one is fine. I like it, but I think it loses to Jim Beam. So if that's 10 high, that means there's two strikes against 10 high. And I don't know if it can remain in the competition against Jim Beam choice, Jack Daniels Black, and Jack Daniels Green. But time will tell. We're not going to play favorites. So let's reveal it. 10 high, Jim Beam. I got it right. Hey, I had a feeling that Jim Beam was going to stand out. It's just a little too quality. And some people love to rag on Jim Beam, right? And Jim Beam, like one of the favorite whipping horses of the whiskey world. Uh, but I had a feeling... Like Paul McCartney said with the Beatles, a feeling down inside, oh yeah, that um, it was going to win. And I was right. And now if Jim Beam beat this rather easily, imagine what Jim Beam choice age five years charcoal filter is going to do. I don't see that being much of a challenge. But time will tell. When is that going to happen? I hope Tuesday. I don't know. I would like to see that happen Tuesday. And then if, if uh, 10 High loses, then that's it. There's no more competition. It's out, and then we'll go and break open a new bottle of uh, something. And I think you'll like what I'm about to break open. I really do think you're going to like that. Four Roses also likes to advertise their yeast combinations. Ah, right. I saw that, which comes off as slightly marketed. Is it good? I'll buy it. Try it again then. Uh, yeah, I was looking at their website, and they have a very interesting graphic, how they crop. They'll say this yeast, that wood, um, or that corn ratio, and they kind of break it all down, and then they show you how you can mix your own and like pick the one you'd like. I really love that, yeah. But I've never tried really in a proper forum for Roses. All right, thanks for watching this video production. The news calls, gotta go see what's happening in the news.